Thank you, Carl. Uh, <coughs> you can correct anything I said wrong now. No, you're, I agree almost with you. I think uh, there's a few parts in there that the pain meds kind of got you. Know, but, uh, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Uh, this is my first exit issues in Alva, and, and thank you for inviting me. The last two weeks has, has been a whirlwind for me. Uh, the first week of session, we was gearing up for this, this step up Oklahoma vote. While I was in a campaign, uh, it was, it's just been a blur. It's been a blur. And, and Tuesday, uh, after, after Monday, that uh, was, was interesting to say the least, Tuesday, I drive back to Guyman to a watch party, and then I'm back in the city Tuesday night. I think I got back to my apartment at 2 o'clock in the morning, but I had bills in committee. And whenever I first decided to run for Senate, I had told the Speaker, I said, I will not let my campaigning affect my job as representative. I'm a representative first, and I will campaign on the side. So I had a job to do. I had, I had bills in committee Wednesday morning, and I had to be back. So. Yeah, it's all been kind of a blur. Um, kind of where we're at in, in Oklahoma from my point, uh, I think we're about right here in getting over the hump. We're close, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I think when the numbers come out on, I believe it's the 20th, isn't it? When the Board of Equalization meets on the 20th of this month, I think we're looking at a flat budget. Uh, our economy's growing, it's turning around. But that's not 100%. Uh, and I know Carl and I have been getting beat up for, it seems like ever, that we haven't done anything. You guys haven't done anything down there. You haven't fixed anything. And, you know, I kind of feel that way. I get frustrated. I'm like, wow, we haven't got anything done. But uh, it's, it's, it's kind of like when you're, when you're building fence. And if you all don't know, I, I run cows. I'm a rancher. So I try to tie everything back to my ranch. And it, it's kind of like you're building fields. And if you're just looking ahead and, and you've got three miles to build and you're pounding post and you got your, actually this, this year it seems like we've had the rock bar out busting rocks to get post in. But you're just looking at, man, I've got, I've got another mile to go and you're, you're looking down at what you've got to do and you, you forget to turn around and look at what you've done. And I think we've, we've, uh, are so focused on the job left to do, we, we forgot to turn around and look what we've accomplished. Um, we, we've set some very, very good foundations this past year. Uh, we're looking at a flat budget. Last year we was $868 million in the hole. Now our economy has turned around, but that wasn't the whole thing turned up, that, that's gotten us flat. Uh, it, it's some of the measures that we did last year in session. Some of the measures we did the year before, uh, just kind of little setting bricks in and, 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 and fixing things. Nothing big, but uh, it's those little measures, and, and when you stick them all together, uh, we're, we're, let's just say we're not out of the tunnel, but we can see the light. We can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I, I think this year we have a good opportunity, uh, especially with a flat budget. If we look at some, some revenue um, raisers, I think we can, we can turn this thing around, and, and little ones. Um, as far as the teacher pay raise, I've, I have voted for a teacher pay raise every time it's been up. We've got to pay our teachers more. And, and not only our teachers, that's our state employees. ODOT workers, DOC workers, prison guards make $13 an hour. They're, they're guarding, they're dealing with Oklahoma's criminals. <coughs> the most dangerous people in Oklahoma for $13 an hour. Uh, they need a raise. Our ODOT workers, you know, you, you kind of, you're, you're tucked in bed all warm and cozy, but when a blizzard hits, <coughs> Those guys are out there clearing roads. Three o'clock in the morning. I know when when I was uh, checking heifers, blizzard hit, and I went out and was checking heifers, and 
those state guys was out there in the road at 3 o'clock in the morning. <coughs> they need a raise, too. There's a lot of work to be done. Uh, you know, when I first got elected three years ago, we had a $611 million hole in the budget. The next year, $1.3 billion hole in the budget. Last year, $868 million. I'm going to go back to my ranching scenario. Uh, in, the, in the middle of, of that drought that we had seemed like forever at my place, but I spent all my money just buying feed and trying to keep things put together. I was bailing wire and gray taping the things together. And, and uh, you, you do that enough, your, your infrastructure is going to start falling down. You're, you just don't have as good as fence. You don't have as good of, of things. And that's where we've been at in Oklahoma. We've been bailing wire and, and duct taping things together. And it's, it's time to go in there and, and fix it right. And I think with a flat budget, I think we have the opportunity to get in there and fix it right. Uh, I agree with Carl, I was a no on this, and, and uh, it was, I, in, in my belief, it was bad for, Oklahoma, or bad for Northwest Oklahoma. When I first ran three years ago, I was at a debate, and I promised that uh, I would not cast a vote for anything, that whenever I went home and went to the grocery store, I'd have to duck my head. And I, I felt like I was... If, if this thing passed and, and the things get enacted that was in it, I would have to duck my head when I went home. And uh, it was tough. It was it was tough because I mean, like I said, I've 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 voted for a teacher pay raise every time. That was a tough vote for me. And you know, if you all, if you all remember, I voted for the A plus plan in, in special session. I understand we need revenue. We've got we've got bailing wire duct tape out there that we've got to fix. But I I just couldn't. I couldn't do it because it was it was bad for us. And uh, whenever whenever they started proposing trading out on wind uh, at Valorum for for gross production, uh, I don't know if you all read the newspaper, but I kind of support wind once in a while. I, I realized I'm not I'm not a wind supporter. What dawned on me, I'm a county supporter. The only reason I support wind is because it's good for our counties. It's good for our schools. If you all didn't know, I was on the school board in Felt for 10 years. Uh, Felt is a little bitty, little bitty school. We don't, we have a feed run there. That's, that's our big ad valorem uh, payer in, 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 the school, in the school district is, is a feed yard. And we struggled. And I looked at that time, Fort Supply got their windmills. Fort Supply was struggling. It was just like felt. Those windmills moved in. They went off the formula. They're doing well. And you look at Balco. And you look, Goodwill's the latest. Goodwill was fixing to close down. I'm not so much a wind supporter as I support my schools. I support my, my counties. Last year, wind paid $74 million dollars in Avalorum, Texas, to 23 counties, 65 school districts. That's who I care about. You know, Daily Oklahoma came out and said, I've gotten $80,000 from, from wind. I don't know where that came from or where that went, because I didn't get $80,000 from wind. I got, in my mind, I hadn't checked it, but it was about, I think, 20, give or take, 20 some. Yeah, but you can count when the wind blew you in to the capital. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, but it sure hurts when it's coming from the south and I fight it all the way down. Uh, but uh, I was thinking about that. I'm like, I don't care about that number. The number I care about is $74 million that it's paying to my counties. I promise you guys, there's plenty of representatives and senators down there that's, that's taking care of that capital and very few that's looking after our counties. I'm going to stand up for our counties. I'm going to stand up for our rural Oklahoma because we're outnumbered, and they're going to they're going to go after us every chance they get. But I'm going to move on. I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of uh, the bills that I've hopefully get off this week because I've only got a week. I'll, I will be sworn in on Thursday to uh, the Senate, so I have. 
uh, Thursday morning at 8.30 actually, so I've got three days to, to finish my work in, on, the, on the house side. So I have a drone bill, and what that is, that is uh, a bill that will, um, to me it, it protects personal property rights and privacy. And so my bill says if you fly a drone over somebody's property, you have to have permission. Uh, right now, so in my bill, it, it goes off of the FAA regulations. I'm not, I'm not going over FFA reg regulations. You have to fly it over with the FFA <coughs> regulations, and you have to have permission. But they don't enforce them. Uh, whenever I started this process, I was at a, at a drone meeting, and uh, since there's been drones, they've issued one citation, I guess is what you would call it, for illegal flight of drones, and it was to a real estate guy in New York City, and they fined him $1.5 million. That's, that's all they've done. Uh, everybody and their dog are going to have drones before long. I, I, I think everybody's going to have a drone. Uh, they're neat. My brother just got one. They're fun. Uh, but there needs to be some rules to the highway. When, when Henry Ford cranked up the, the Ford plant and it started getting more cars on the road, the first, first cars out there that was driving through, there wasn't any rules on how you drove that car. You drive it however you want it. But as more and more and more cars got on the road, we had to have some rules to the road for safety. Well, I think that's what we need with drones. And so I, I've got this, that bill going on, and, and you know, I really, I really don't want somebody flying a drone over my property. And with the cameras on it, I don't want them taking pictures of, of me sitting on my back porch. Now, they probably delete them really fast, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's still my privacy. And, and we need to have some rules to road. So what that does is it gives the local law enforcement agencies the right, the ability to go write basically a speeding ticket uh, if, if you're flying a drone illegally outside the, the course of, of the FFA regulation. So it just gives the authority to, the, so say you, you call the police, and actually someone from Tulsa had, had emailed me last year when I ran the bill. I had to kind of clean it up. It, it got, well, lobbyists got a hold of it and kind of amended it on the Senate side and just messed the whole bill up, so I just laid it over and was going to fix it this year. But a man from, from uh, Tulsa emailed me. He said his daughter was out in the backyard, and this drone was just sitting there hovering, and he called the police, and they showed up and said, there's nothing we can do. That's not against the law. Well, it should be. And that's why I ran the drone bill. I've got uh, a bill that uh, would be would lead, would give uh, local school boards the final say on whether they allow a, a charter school to come into their school district. Like I said, I was on the school board. Uh, that local school board knows the best interest for that school district, and right now they have. They have, they have that vote, but then you can appeal it to the state school board. And what worries me is that state school board doesn't know what's happening in Alabama, Oklahoma. But that local school board does. And uh, I want to I leave it local control as, as much as I can. Because that's, that's who knows what's going on in their communities is the locals. Uh, with that... I will, I will wrap up. Uh, I do think this year is going to be better. Oh, wait, I do want to say this. So, on the teacher pay raise, so like I said, <coughs> I voted for a teacher pay raise every time that it's been on the books, been on the, been on the board. Tuesday morning, I was in the speaker's office proposing another plan. And I, I said, look, we, what, so we have other options. And so the other options that, that's sitting out there that we can get a teacher pay raise is we have the Romney Light plan that we voted out of the House last year that's sitting over in the Senate. Now, it's, a, it's, it's a kind of a, a, 
cut down version of what Romney was wanting to do with the federal tax structure when he ran in 12. And, and just kind of <clears throat> cleaning up Oklahoma's tax uh, policy. The cigarette tax and then the ball and dice. Those three things right there brings in about $300 million. We need $280 million for the teacher pay raise, for the $5,000. Uh, that right there will get, the, get it done, it'll be clean, <coughs> and uh, I think we can do it fairly quick and we can get the teachers the pay raise. And so, you know, Tuesday morning I was in there selling that to the speaker. Uh, I also came circled back around yesterday and bugged him again about it. So, you know, I'm still out there working trying to get trying to get the teachers teachers a pay raise. Um, but with that I think I, I hit on everything, so <clears throat>